Hey folks, this is Austin Unruh from Crow and Berry, and I'm over here at Fiddle Creek Dairy Farm of Tim and Francis Souter. And I want to just show you some of the species that we've been using here at their farm. This is the largest silvo pasture planting that I've done to date. We're looking at about 1,500 trees on the farm so far, um, with more trees coming in next year. And I should give props, first of all, to Tim and Francis, the owners of the farm, for their willingness to, to experiment and the willingness to, to really innovating here in this way of getting trees established on the ground. There's not too many people that would be, that would be game for, um, for trying this, especially at this scale. But I'm, I love their commitment to regenerative agriculture, to grazing, and to pushing the envelope on new, new ways of, of managing the land. So let me show you the, the types of trees that we're using here. And right here you can see this is a hybrid willow. A hybrid willow, a couple of things that we get out of that. One is really fast growth and fast shade. Uh, on the, in this planting, it's hands down the best producers so far, the one that has the highest success rate and the most growth. They're consistently six, seven, eight feet tall and coming out of their tubes. So the hybrid willow, we're using that for, for leaf fodder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna manage those by pollarding them. And what pollarding would be is right here at about six feet, so above browse height, we're eventually gonna cut these and they're gonna form a callus right there where they continue to grow willow, new willow shoots. And those willow shoots will be available during the summer months when we need, when this farm needs a little bit of extra forage um, in order to feed the livestock during the summer slump. So this is an extra, just an extra source of, of fodder one of the benefits of, of willows is that they have a high tannin content in their leaves, so they have some medicinal value as well. So the hybrid willow is one. Let's go over, let's go see another one. That's our black locust. So the black locust, and these are doing, these are doing mighty well. Also consistently getting up to six, seven feet here in the first growing season. So these were all planted in May, no, March of 2020. And they're now six, seven feet tall, just a couple of months later. This is August 8th when I'm shooting this. So um, honey or black locust, black locust was chosen for two reasons primarily. Black locust has a very dappled shade and it also fixes nitrogen. So it's gonna be a really nice tree for, for a pasture because it's gonna increase the amount of nitrogen and fertility in the soil because of, because of its presence. So then there's three other types of trees that we've planted primarily in here, actually four. Honey locust as well, persimmon, mulberry, and hybrid poplar. None of them have taken off quite as well as these two, as the black locust and willow, but then again, those have put on, say, five, six feet of growth in their first season, so I can't, I can't blame the other ones too much. Mulberry so far has been our forest performer for some reason, um, and I've noticed this on other plantings as well, that even though mulberry is such a tough plant in in other plantings or or when it comes up on its own like in a in a residential area or under a, on a fence row or where, wherever you don't want it it's a very tough plant um it's been it's been a struggle to get that established here but then again it's only the first year and oftentimes i've noticed that certain species will struggle in their first year they might even die back like a persimmon i've often had persimmons die back their first year and then come back with a vengeance in year two and grow stronger than ever. So honey locust is, is kind of the backbone of this system. And we choose it because it has a dappled canopy and lets a lot of light come through the, through the canopy. Um, it also provides um, nitrogen fixation. And the biggest thing is that it'll drop 
nutritious pods in the fall um, from say October through December is when it drops its pods. So it makes it a very valuable source of extra energy and, and nutrition going into the winter months to kind of um, get the herd, um, get the herd beefed up and ready for winter. So that's it. That's the species that we're using here on this farm. Um, and those are some of my go-to species for any, any silver pasture setup in this region. Okay. Thank you very much for watching and keep on grazing.